I think we're up and running, are we? Good. Another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful clear day. It never rains in Southern California, Tokyo. <laughs> we still have no snow. It tried last night. Yesterday afternoon, it had been a clear day for most of the day. It clouded over, and then this, the street got this sort of a little bit of a glisten. It tried. It was trying to rain slash snow. We have not seen a single flake yet here. Everybody's just astounded at this. The rest of Japan, you may have seen the news. There's freeways jammed, there's closings, there's everything. But here in Tokyo, somehow there's a, there's a dome over top of this place. Lots of bikes. Actually, the bikes, nay, the people over across the street who have finished their renovation, I guess, have brought their bikes back. During the renovation time, they took their own family bicycles and moved them somewhere else. I guess they're all back now. The other bicycles, I don't know. This could be just simply Friday night leftover. People who came for a drink and uh, either forgot their bike or couldn't uh, ride it home. The police will ticket you. If you ride home on a bicycle and they pull you over and you're, you're, you don't pass a breathalyzer, you're ticketed. Is the paper out? No. Next question, please. <laughs> Nobody up there today. Nobody up there. The printers are off. There will be uh, Sugisan's coming tomorrow, but today nobody's here. It's just the shop. Nobody in the nobody in the uh, office upstairs. It'll be a three of us in the shop. I'm here. Modi-san will be here today, and I think I know. And Mieta-san is here. I'm not sure. <laughs> Excuse me. So upstairs today will all be dark and gloomy. Okay, what's the plan today? The plan today is carving. I have two options on that. The block we were looking at the other day, you know, we started persuading it. That is not yet finished. I can do persuading work on this. And then I also have today now, the next hanshita, we are going to paste down the hair. We have a new block to start. And that's, no, it's not the last block. We also have to do the signature, but it's the last main block on the picture. Once I get that hair carved, it can go upstairs for test printing. But what I should do, I think, is let's uh, let's start with with finishing the clearing work that I almost got finished yesterday on the other street. Let's finish this little bit of clearing here. There's one still to do the other side. I'll do the persuading off stream. It's just too noisy. Will we get to Jacques? Let's do it right now. I've got all this unopened mail. Jacques Commandeur has been waiting patiently for weeks. <laughs> do I know how big the waiting list for the Surfer Girl print is? No, not at all. In fact, we haven't got an, an official, like we didn't open a web page, put your order in here. Supply will not be a problem. Relax. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, it's a, a New Year card or a Christmas card, whatever. Jacques is, uh, is Western, so he'll send a Christmas card. It's no problem to talk about this. He's a public person. Jacques is probably not here. He's gone to bed by now. But uh, one year, three or four, five or six or ten years ago, he was at one of the local museums. He's in Leiden, and maybe he went to Den Haag or, I don't know, anyway. He was in a museum over there, and in the gift shop, they had a Great Wave souvenir. And the souvenir was in the same form that we are going to see today. It was a picture of the great wave, and it has these funny creases in. And it turns out there's lenses built in, and it's a little funny. I don't remember how to do this. Dave San, I wish you and the complete Mokankan staff a happy and productive 2023. Thank you, Jacques San. You, he's been a long supporter for many, many, many years. And it's one of these deals. You, you, you pick it up. And it's a stereoscopic picture, if you get it just right. I can't quite get it right, but whatever, it's in there somewhere. There it is, cherry blossoms in stereo. I don't think we can do it. I don't think we can do it in the camera. I've only got one camera. But <laughs> Anyway, Jacques-san, thanks for your friendship. Thanks for your uh, support over the years. He sent the Great Wave one, and then a year after that, the next year, it was something from Escher, and then it went on and on and on and on and on. So it's a 3D viewer. So 
For those of you who don't know, uh, my, the friend and supporter Jacques Commandeur, he's got a fabulous website. He has a print collection. If somebody just searches, I don't have it. If you search Jacques Commandeur uh, Woodbot Prints, if you search that, his website comes up. It's full of really interesting, interesting prints. He's not a printmaker, he's a print collector and a supporter of people like me. This is another show and tell potential box. We have a bird book, another bird book to look at. We've got extra stuff for show and tell. I have no idea. Let's talk about it when we get there. That's an awfully big box for what's inside. What has he done? There's supposed to be a package of small wood box prints, and this person has uh, kind of overdone it, but whatever. We'll worry about that when we get to it later. Now, some of these are obviously for opening online. Some of them are not for opening online. We looked at that one the other day. We looked at that one as well. Steve, so, so, so. So we've looked at these to show. This was from Steve. He had sent a woodblock print. We looked at this. And there's another one from Steve this morning. It's going to be another woodblock print. And this one, I guess, is the one that I thought it was the other day. This must be the new print that Steve made for Jed, I think. No, it's not. <laughs> Wrong again. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the one he sent the other day. Oh, I see. An alternate version of reality. Okay. These are prints from Steve Winiecki, a young American. He's living in New York City. He's working for us now and then as a carver. In fact, he's waiting for another job. I have to send him another job soon. He also works making woodblock prints for Jed Henry. Jed Henry is interested in supporting some younger guys, younger people, who are learning how to do carving and printing in the traditional way. So Jed is also working with Steve and has a new print. <laughs> But this is Steve's personal production. I guess it's his New Year card. Yes, this year's holiday print design. Okay. I still, I was wrong again. I thought it was Steve's latest print from Jed. And is this a woodblock print? No, this is not a woodblock print. So this is another simply, it's a, it's a New Year card saying hello and thank you and uh, welcome. But it's not a print to show everybody. Okay, let's get to work. So the outline then for the work today is going to be this. I will finish clearing the area around this surfboard area. It'll only take me five or ten minutes because most of the persuading was done. We will then switch. I will then get a brand new piece of wood out and we will paste down a hunched up, maybe have a small peel, not a big peel, and we'll start carving the hair for the lady. That's today's plan. When we get to show and tell time, I have lots of options. We have book two in the bird books. We have other prints standing by. We will have lots of things to look at. It's Saturday morning, so Ayana-san won't be here today, but there will be another guest coming here to Mokohankan this morning. Somebody who lots of you know. Now, she may show up in time to show her nose on the stream. This morning, Ayumi Shiba is coming today. The lady who you hear me refer to as Shiba-san. She used to work for us at Mokohankan. She only now does part-time work for us out in our shipping center. She used to work here at Mokohankan as a print party host, and she designs and publishes prints in her own right. She's known for her ghost series, uh, for her spider print. She's coming today because she and I are going to work upstairs doing some sizing. She needs paper for her latest print, she wants to do the sizing herself. She wants to learn how to do this. So she and I are going to work upstairs on sizing. And I hope she's here in time. She knows that the stream finishes 9.30, so she may just show up at 9.30, or she may come earlier and say hello. She's a really nice girl, super, super, super hard worker. She and I have a complete difference of opinion about how her prints should be marketed, produced and marketed, but uh, can't be helped.
And I guess she has a new print up and running, which is why she is here to do some paper sizing. So maybe even if all goes well, maybe she'll show up before stream ends. She will have a sample of her print. We can see it. Now I mentioned the difference of opinion. What I want to do is I want Mokohankan to actually produce her prints. She will design, she will carve the blocks, she will make the first group of them, sign off, and then turn it over to our printers. And we can make prints identical to the ones she made herself. And that way she can move on to making her next print and her next design. She doesn't want to do that. She wants to do it all by herself. That's all very well and it results in, you know, wonderful handmade prints, but it means there's no production. She will make X copies of the print she's making now, and then lots of people might want it, but that's too bad because she's moved on to making her next one. So the prints, by, by virtue of that system, only end up having a few copies each, which doesn't help anybody. But she won't, uh, she won't come around to our way of thinking, so, and I get it, I can't argue with it. It's just a different way of seeing the world. And the sort of frustrating thing about it is that some people who have that viewpoint, they are thinking because they have limited edition prints, the prints will end up being very expensive and they will sell them for a huge lot of money and they can become rich artists. Aimee san is not even thinking in that sense. She kept the price of the prints low, lower than they would have been if we had been making them in the shop ourselves. So she's not making money out of them. She's not making any money at all out of them. It doesn't even cover her costs, her time. And there's also no limited edition numbers. She doesn't put numbering on them. So they're open edition anyway, because she may want to make more copies in the future. So it doesn't make any sense. And if you've got any, if she does come here today, shower her with, with love. Get Mokohankan to make your prints. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to have trouble keeping this in view here today. You're talking about asterisk. Oh, you must have got that from Jacques' website. To show. <laughs> Jacques is very, very big on European comics, of course. <laughs> no, I'm saying it doesn't have a website. If you go to our, if you go to the Moko Hong Kong, uh, catalog, you will see in guest prints, you'll see Aimi San's prints are in the guest print section of the Moko Hong Kong catalog. But at the moment, they're, they're probably all turned off. Because we don't have stock. You know. She won't let us print them. We did try it, you know, I think we've, we've talked about this on the stream before, we, we must have talked about it actually when it happened. It would have been maybe just before Corona, three years ago or so. One of her prints had been really, really, really popular. It's, it's a ghost, the ghost in the graveyard, the woman who had become beautiful after she died. And we did, we convinced her to let, uh, let us try this. And she's like, no, 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 okay, let's try it. And we got a batch of paper, 40 sheets or so. She prepared one of her, her copies that she wanted us to reproduce. And our printer, Mr. K, Kawaii-san, who used to work in the, in the, he did, he carefully, carefully took her master copy and made 40 copies of it. And we sat down in a meeting, the three of us, me, me and Mr. K and Shiba-san. And she starts looking through these prints and I thought they were fantastic. Mr. K was really proud of what he'd done. They looked just like the master copy. 
and she picks them up and looks at one and looks at another. And this is, I'm not telling bad stories about her. This is just what the lady is. And she looked through them and then said to us, no, I, I can't, I can't, we just can't sell these. I can't sell these. I'm like, and we're like, please tell us what, what's going on, what's wrong. And she picks up one of the prints and there's, there's a small dog down in the corner. And whatever, I could not detect any difference. And she's, look at the expression on his face. It's just completely different from mine. And I looked at the two and I honestly couldn't see a difference. And Kawai-san looked at the two and he says, I, I think it's actually kind of the same. And she says, no, you just, you just, you, you, you guys just don't get it because you're not the artist. You don't get it. And she took them away and that's it. I'm not allowed to sell them. I had to pay Mr. Mr. K for his time for that and whatever. And it's, it's whatever. She just clearly was backtracking and couldn't find a reason to say no, but just did not want to let prints out into the world that weren't made by her. We were going to put the name on, carved by Ayumi-san, printed by Mr. K, you know, whatever. So that's it. That was the end of it for me. I'm not going to waste any more money and time with her on that one. So She knows we're short of stock. She knows the demand. There's a huge waiting list for her prints. People, I'm not, not an official waiting list, but there's a huge, people ask us all the time for her prints. And someone says over perfectionism. I don't so much think it was over perfectionism because the print we did really, really, really was very good. It was just that she had finally been pushed her back was against the wall and there was nothing else for her to say. She just didn't want to do that. You know, she had sort of changed her mind. She realized it was a mistake to let us try it. And she was just grasping at some reason, saying the expression on the dog's face was different. It was just a, a sort of a defense mechanism. I'm not speaking badly of her. I get what she is. She's an artist. I'm not. So I get it. But uh, I just feel sad because, you know, so many more people could be enjoying the pleasure of the thing. And not to mention she could be making, like, more money to help feed herself. Mr. K would have more work. It's just win-win-win all around. Anyway, enough, enough, enough of that. We've probably sold the same, same story now many, many, many times. <sighs> Those dang artists, so blessed and eccentric. So... <laughs> No, I get it. I get it. In words, I get it. I don't feel it myself. I get it. You know, she wants it to be her, like somebody said, she wants her soul to be in there. I get it. I hear those words. They don't have any meaning to me, but I hear them. And her feeling, I think, would make, would make a lot more sense if there wasn't such a thing as the 300-year tradition of the Japanese print made by craftsmen who are taking, uh, you know, ideas from, from the artists and producing glorious works. So the, the Japanese ukiyo-e print tradition, uh, the, the Japanese traditional print uh, in its heart, is one of the glories and masterworks of human achievement. So <laughs> there is that side to it as well, you know. Yes, I understand her point of view, but uh, like it can be done. Hokusai didn't make any woodblock prints, and yet here he is, you know, known and recognized as one of the glories of, of world art, and he didn't touch the damn pieces of paper. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. She'll probably come early today, and I'll say something, and we'll start the same argument as soon as she gets in the door. <laughs> Well, no, it's funny. She's not a Sosaku artist. That's, that's interesting. I know it looks like she might be Sosaku. Sosaku artists are the, the modern way of doing things. They design, they cut, they print, they put it out by themselves. She's not a Sosaku artist. Because those people are thinking they are high art and their prints should sell for six bajillion dollars and they're limited editions and they make three and that's finished and then go on to make something else. She's actually a traditional printmaker who just wants to do all the steps by herself. Her mindset and her thinking suits much more that of the traditional setup. It doesn't suit Sosaku again at all.
Sorry about the sniffles this morning. It's uh, really been chilly in Tokyo the last few days and uh, I've got myself some sniffles. Okay, that one's ready and done. Uh, it might need to be cleared a little bit wider. I'm not going to muck with it right now. It's certainly done enough, ready for uh, ready for sending to test printing. So there's two surfboard areas: the full surfboard itself, uh, the bottom side of the surfboard, which will get a certain amount of light and reflection. This will be for the top side of the surfboard. And the tip of the surfboard is also there, and her bikini is also on this block, as are the lips. You saw before the color, the blue, the blue wave color blocks. Okay, now we're going to move on. We are going to prepare the transfer sheet for her hair. We have the dark lines of her hair. Now this is taking, where did I get this data from? I took her uh, the original. Uh, I took the copy of the print we have. This went into it got uh, uh, digitized, scanned, and went into an iPad, where I layered it up and I traced very carefully inside the iPad all the areas that needed to be her black hair, the same way as I did with the original outlines. And in fact, you can see that the, that tracing came up here. This was the outlines I traced along with her black hair. And for this step today, the outlines are already done. All we need here is the black hair. So everything else on this sheet you see, waves and surfboard and body shape and bum and everything else, that's done. And in fact, you can perhaps see the area of gumpy here is not the entire sheet. I didn't want to waste all that gumpy paper. All I need is the hair. The other thing that's going to be a little bit different today is this. I'm going to zoom out so we can see this easily. The block size, the pieces of wood we are using here, suit, of course, the entire print. When we did the blue backgrounds, we needed a block that was big enough to do the entire background. This one I've done here with the different areas of surfboard, we haven't used the entire surface of the block. We're using the same piece of wood for one, two, three, four, five, six areas. Now for her hair, it would be really quite a waste for me to get a huge expanse of wood like this just to use the hair in the middle. So here's what I'm going to do. I have a smaller piece of wood for this one. And the registration marks are going to go in the corner. 
something like this. We'll get this in a few minutes. And then her hair will appear in this area. So I don't need to waste a larger block just for this one. And we'll probably maybe put the uh, signature, the artist's signature, in the bottom. If I had a never-ending supply of good quality blocks, yeah, we'd keep all the blocks the same size. They would wrap up comfortably there. They would be on the shelf. But I don't have a good supply of wood blocks. And I've got a, what looks like a nice little hard one here that might do the job for her hair. I can't see the chat easily with those glasses. Here we are. Someone's building the Lego wave, are you? I see that it was sold out, it seems. I poked around on the net. It says the great wave is all sold out. Hard little piece of wood. Hang on a sec. A couple of taps here. If your headphones, be careful. I'm going to tap a little bit here. Three, two, one.
think there's lots of discussion about the light and stuff again. I know this isn't, of course, absolutely necessary. Chon San, the other carver working for us, he doesn't do this. He just uses a strip light. And because of it's a strip light, light comes from all different directions and it focuses out nicely. So anybody's thinking they need to do, they need to find a flask before they can do traditional Japanese carving. It's not like that, of course. Just what we want to avoid is a single spot. Have diverse light coming in and you're going to be okay. If you're going to play armchair psychiatrist, you can think that Dave is doing this because he's such an outsider. Using these super old traditional techniques help gives him credibility or something like this, whatever. I don't know. Is this my defense mechanism? Yeah, I'm a real carver. I'm a real carver. You know, look, look, look. Here's my old-fashioned light. I don't know. <laughs> There's not going to be any giant peel here. There's only a tiny piece of gompi paper here, so, so don't stand by expecting Olympic spectaculars here. Glad to see Dave's cheery as ever. I'm happy, you know, the last few weeks, months have been, <laughs> have been a little bit difficult. It's still difficult. I, I sat there last night, you know, we had a kind of a peaceful day yesterday. The shop had been well staffed. There was three in the shop yesterday. Teiko-san, uh, I don't even remember. There was two staff. There was, so I didn't even go in the shop yesterday downstairs. They were well staffed. And Watanabe-san is off on a medical issue. Ayama-san was off. Yamada-kun was off. It was just me and Ayano upstairs on the second floor. And we got our work done quite well. She asked me a few questions. I asked her a few questions. I sat in my room working. She sat in her room working. We had a quiet, peaceful day. And we all got a bunch of work done quite well. But when they all left, I sat there in my room, you know. I, what I had done, I, <clears throat> yesterday I did, the, I did the, what we call here the chimp. Every couple of months we put out what we call the chimp. We use the MailChimp email service to send out, you know, update information, whatever, to people on, on, a, on an email waiting list. And that went out yesterday. And that was my job yesterday. I sat down in the morning when I got back from the pool. I pulled up a blank, a blank template, and I filled it in. And by the end of the afternoon, it was all ready with photographs and text and checked and written. So that was my job yesterday. And it came out pretty well. But then I sat there and just, I don't know, at the end of that thing, those of you who received it, you know what happened. At the end of it there, I got kind of a little bit, kind of a little bit, I don't know, whatever. I got kind of a little bit Dave. It's a mini peel, but it's a peel. How far can we go before this breaks? There it is. So it does tear. <laughs> you have to work at it. <laughs> anyway, I got kind of Dave there, so and I, I sat there. I had my dinner, 7-Eleven dinner. Sat there for a while. Dave, what are you doing? Okay, I don't have it. Oh, I do have it here. I do have it here. The key block for this print has already hair on it. Here's the key block. And this has the undertone for her hair.
It's got the outlines, which will be printed in a gray, a nice gray, not black, there'll be a gray. And then it's got the undertone for her hair, and it's even got a few chut, 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 chut little hairs. And then, of course, her face. This will be the key block. We start the whole process with it. Then what's this other block for? This is the block for black. This is black. And if we go back to the design, I guess you can perhaps see what's going on. Her face, as I said, her face and the body lines are gray, and that's under the hair. You can see these striations cut out here. They're not going to be white. It wouldn't look like the lady had white streaks. So they are the gray under block. The gray that you see here is the same gray that's her shoulder line. It looks dark here against the white, and it looks gray here against the black. But my finger is pointing to two parts that are exactly the same color. What looks lighter here and darker here is the key block for this print. Then what I am now going to carve today is the black block for this. says he looking at it and then wondering why I can't see those gray lines. Because it seems I have forgotten to include them. Look at this. Look at this. We're going to have to move to plan B here today. This thing that I've just pasted down is actually not ready for carving. Whoops, where am I? Get on, get on camera, Dave. This thing that I've just pasted down needs the location of those gray lines in it. Of course, it needs those gray lines. They aren't there. So last night, when I was doing the export from the Photoshop, I chose the wrong layer. So we can't carve this right now, today. I'm going to have to go back and re-export it. I'm going to have to go back to my Photoshop file which came out of the iPad, the tracing. I'm going to have to re-export it with those gray lines included. So plan B, I can't go ahead and do this today. Can we do this on stream? What time is it now, 8.40? Where's the file? It's on my hard drive up there. No, because I've got to print it out, then go to the 7-Eleven. Just, it doesn't work for something that I could do on a stream. So, no problem. Plan B. Let's move on to something else. We'll see this again. <laughs> Today's Saturday. We'll revisit this. Deja vu Monday morning. But luckily, we have the other face of that previous block still standing by <laughs> ready for work. <laughs> so guess what? <laughs> We're going to have a Persuader stream after all. Ah well, ah well, ah well. <laughs> Part of this too, you know, it's what you get when you do this thing at fits and starts and jumps. I do a little bit today, a little bit six weeks from now. This is no way to do your job, you know, grabbing at little bits of time here and there, trying to make it all work, so, obviously. How would an old carver react if an apprentice made that same mistake you just did? You mean, you mean made a mistake in preparing the hunchda? 
There's no, not, nothing dramatic, whatever. I know this happens sort of, whatever. There's 30 people working here doing their jobs. I know somebody tried to make some labels the other day. They printed the labels on the wrong size of paper. We had to throw those labels away and print some more labels. I know, whatever. It's a lot of complicated processes going on here. Sometimes you get it right. Most of the times you get it right. Sometimes you don't. There's no big dramatic deal here. How would an old carver react if an apprentice mistake the same mistake? You tell me, if he's a jerk, he would yell and scream and say, get out of here and do it again. If he's a nice guy, he'd say, look, this isn't going to work. Let's do it again and start tomorrow. I mean, I have no nothing to, to tell you, you know. That's even, I mean, I could have actually gone ahead to do this. What I could have done here today is just carved that thing, all the outside shape that we see. Remember, this is key to the registration mark, you know. I could have just gone ahead and carved this thing. And then once that was finished and cleared and we had it all ready, if you imagine this was the hair block already, but it didn't have the gray lines, I could then go back to my Photoshop file, print out a file that showed the location of those gray lines, put it in the registration marks, it would paste down beautifully on top of that, and I could then just simply carve out those gray lines. That's also doable, and I could have just slipped ahead that way and told you guys, oh yeah, we'll add the gray lines later. That would have been easy to do but I would rather have it all together in one. The more times you go back to the well, the more times you put it in that registration mark when you're carving, the more chance you have of getting it a little bit off, you know. It's a dry day. I went to the 7-Eleven to print that out. It's really dry. If I did it the way I just mentioned, maybe it would be raining tomorrow. The paper would swell a little bit. It might not line up. So to minimize problems, I'm going to do it together. But I could have just gone ahead with that this morning. <laughs> And the other thing too, it's, you know, I really, this goes back to when I was a school kid, you know. We've talked about this guy before, my math teacher in whatever would it be, I don't even remember, grade 7, grade 8, grade 9, somewhere on there. We had this math teacher and he was one of the most repellent human beings I've ever met. And among the things he did was his absolute refusal to admit to anything wrong or to show weakness or to be anything but, you know, he had... It's not enough to say the guy was a perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist too, but something, you know, like every, he would be, he would make a mistake and the kids would see it and someone would say something and the guy would be a volcanic explosion. No, no, no. So remembering that, I, I maybe go overboard the other way too far. Here's a chance to show people that I'm making a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I've actually, maybe I actually do that too much. I don't know. Oh my God! I thought that here's my chance. I can I can show people how cool I am by being the kind of person who admits his mistakes. <laughs> Is that the situation? I don't. <laughs> okay, let's stop talking here and carve a little bit, can we? Is that, is, that a, <laughs> is that an expression of the person is so self-confident that he can easily admit the mistakes or he's so not confident, he's, what's the opposite of self-confident? He's so uh, insecure that he has to pretend he's the kind of person who is so self-confident he can admit his mistakes. Shall I lie down on the couch for the analysis? I don't know. None of us know each other. We think we know who we are, but we don't know who we are, you know. I'm sure people watching these streams have a better grasp of this person's character than the person himself. I think. I think. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, can I say this with laughing? I think at the end of the day, uh, let's just leave it. There's nothing else I can add to what I said before. <laughs> I 
Actually, there is a little bit more to add to this. There's a little bit more to add. I, know, I got an email this morning. I haven't replied to it yet. This person might be here, uh, might be here in the stream, so I should be careful what I'm, what I'm saying. I got another email. I get these, these kind of emails quite often. It's a person who wants to come and make a documentary about Mokohanka. This particular one, this was straight up, this was a student, and he said, I'm a student at such and such a place, and my assignment, and blah, 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 and I need to make a five minute, blah, 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 could I do something with you guys? So I, I'm okay with this, whatever, a five minute film, whatever, no problem, no problem. But the reason I, I bring this up now is because we do get people writing to us saying, I'm a documentary filmmaker, and uh, you know, I wanna come and do a documentary about you guys. And when I see these, I wonder, oh, is this the one? Is this the one? Because in the back of my mind, I have the idea that, you know, I think highly of what we're doing here. So I think that there's good, a good topic here and good meat here. So do I think there's a good documentary story here? Yes, I do. Do I think it's an easy story? No. And we've had one documentary made about our work already, the one that was playing in the airplane. So what's it called? The Art of the Game. It was not a documentary about me, it was a documentary about that specific you know, project. And we said yes to it because I wanted the story to go out there, but I was so, 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 so disappointed in the process and in how it came out. So ever since then, I've been, I've been nursing my wounds and thinking one day, one day, this genius documentary maker is gonna come along, look at what we're doing here. He's really going to understand himself what's happening here, and he will look deeply, figure everything out, and he will tell the story. And this is sort of something in the background here that, that I want to happen. <laughs> This morning's email, the young boy said, five minutes, high school project, whatever. Of course, then that's not the thing. But I want it to happen. Somebody who is so good at this and who can discover what's going on here that he can teach me who I am. That's sort of what I want to happen. Not teach me who I am, find out who I am. The, the angles here, it's the worst possible angle to do this. The way the wood grain works, the angle of the surfboard, the distance from the corner of the wood. It's, if Taransan is here today, he's just laughing himself silly at the way I'm doing this. Koringami's got the comment here. Most people probably don't understand what Koringami's comment. He said, you are already working with an Academy Award winner. What more can you ask for? And I, I suspect there are not many people in this stream who understand what Koringami is talking about here. Anybody know? Koringami, are you going to tell him? <laughs> I do <laughs> The person in question, Koringami, no, the real Academy Award. I do. Koringami is correct. I have been working for years with an Academy Award winner, a real, honest-to-goodness Academy Award winner. But the person in question doesn't like to talk about it because he feels whatever. Put it behind you, move forward, do something better. It's really interesting. I work with an Academy Award winner. No, not the frog Ed mentioned. No, not the frog guy. Nope, 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 nope in their dreams, not the frog guys. 
You don't know, we've talked about this before. Yeah, Coding Gummy's got it. Jed's, great, Jed's graduation project at uh, uh, B BYU scored the real Honest to Goodness Academy Award that year. That was called, I think it was called Kite. It's a, an anime, and Jed didn't do the whole thing. Jed was the team leader, the project leader. He, was, he did the look and feel of the drawing. He didn't do the storyboard. Jed was the, I forget what the name, producer, director, whatever. I don't even know. No idea. And I think it's called Kite. And what year would it have been? Uh, you got to go back 12, 13 years, I guess. And he scored an actual, real, honest-to-goodness Academy Award. I don't know if he has a statuette, if it's on his shelf, or if it's in the school, the school trophy cabinet. I don't know. Got some links, people? Yes, thank you. Good, 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 good. The other part of that story with Jed, you know, I guess we, again, we must have mentioned this before, you know. <coughs> that all happened before I knew him, a few years before I knew him, so I wasn't part of any of this. I just heard it in passing. Actually, I think he had mentioned something about it. He didn't come out to me and say, Dave, wow, I've got an academy. Didn't you know that? He never even mentioned it. It must have popped up on something else I've been reading, and I came back to Jed. Jed, what, what, wait, 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 tell me about this. What's going on? He didn't mention this. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, 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 whatever. So he didn't uh, come on to me with this. I learned about it somewhere else, you know. But then at that point, he did, he did mention, an, you know, another story about this, which I guess is, is probably true, because he was the director of that thing that, that scored the, uh, the award. I guess he got, a, he got a call, you know. He got the call, the call that all young animators and people in animator programs and people who are doing this kind of stuff, they all wait for the call from Pixar. And he got the call and said, no thanks. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are, you know. And he did. He, we chatted about it once, you know. And he said, I, 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 you know, it's cool. It was nice to have the recognition. But he realized if he had gone over there 
you know, the, the deal, what would you end up in their next major production? He gets to animate somebody's little finger moving something, you know. And he, I guess he didn't want to be just one person in a, in a major, major team like that. He wanted to cut his own way. It's funny because he's, he's not the dramatic, ego-driven entrepreneur type, you know. He's really quite uh, quiet and um, in, in, in insular. So he might have been a good worker on a big team like that too, you know. So, but yeah, he must have said, "I, I was because I wasn't part of it." He must have said, well, "Thank you, but uh, but no thanks," or whatever the expression was, you know. So, which is kind of cool. Which is really kind of cool, you know. It's somewhere around here that the grain reverses. It wants to go this way and then it wants to go this way. Somewhere around here it goes the other way around. So. What's it? Oh, nine o'clock. I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> Local time in Tokyo. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, chocolate, chocolate fish. It's fly fish for fun. He doesn't get an egg, he gets a fish. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> what are we doing? Little things amuse little minds. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. Thank you. Got it right on the nose. Thank you very much. I understand. I understand. 
I understand. I, <laughs> I hope I hope nobody else drops into this dream. They're gonna what what the hell are we doing here, you know? <laughs> what are what is life for, you know? My God. How hard up do you have to be for, for interesting things to do with your life when, it's, when hitting that on 9 o'clock gives you pleasure? How hard, yeah, so how hard up do we have to be? It's no worse than a whole lot of other things human beings do, you know. Anytime this kind of conversation comes up, I got to think about this, you know. We are happy at this achievement that's been scored here today, you know, which absolutely in this universal terms is completely, totally meaningless. We know this. But yet, yet, we're all laughing at this. We all got pleasure out of something which didn't really mean anything. How does this work? And the, the best analogy that comes to mind is that, you know, Imagine, you know, like you've got this idea, you've got a big open space of land and you put a little cup in the ground at one point and you walk a long way away from it and you give a bunch of people some sticks and some balls and say, let's use these sticks, hit these little balls and get it in that little hole. You know, I mean, like, like what could be more pointless? Possibly what could be more pointless than that, you know? And yet, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people do this and they, they spend millions of dollars on it. There's golf, whatever. No, I've never heard bowling, I'm not in it, but no, I haven't heard the story. But the point is there, you know, like, why do we do this? It makes no sense, except in the context of meaning only exists in as much as we create meaning ourselves, you know, clearly. The cosmos is a joke. There's no meaning in the universe, clearly. The only meaning is what we make for ourselves. And whether it's something dorky like golf or hitting a nine o'clock <laughs> time spot <laughs> or spending your life chopping pieces of wood. Meaning is as meaning says, you know, you make it up as you go along, you know. My God, my God, my God. It's not that we get to decide what's meaningful, it's that we have to decide what's meaningful. If you, if you, you know, unless you're going to stick with the unexamined life. Heavy stream today.
is the moment where everybody's waiting for me to hit this flask, right? It, we don't need the flask at this point, and honestly speaking, if it was easier to remove it and get it out of the way, I would do so. Over in Ome, it's on a little hook. I can unhook it and move it out of the way easily. Here, it's sort of wired into that thing up there that I don't really want to climb up there and do this. <clears throat> but yeah, anybody looking right now, why is that flask here? We don't need it for this job. Yes, common sense, I should just move it out of the way. Because if I'm not too, if I'm not quite careful enough here, we're gonna nick it and I'm gonna get drowned. It's the old thing, don't do as I... <laughs> Tiny block and tackle. So, <clears throat> I mean, we need a switch, a switch under my table. Click, buzz, buzz, up she goes. You know, we need a little, a little switch like that. You know, it's sort of like on my list of things to do one day, never. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday is running through my brain. Nine o'clock on a Saturday. How's our time? 9.09, 9.10, okay. A few more minutes here, and then we'll switch to our show and tell. Excuse me. Ah! Oh. Blow your nose right into the microphone, Dave. Sorry about that, excuse me. I do have the sniffles. According to the official company rules, which Aoyama-san promulgated last week, he went to the Tokyo website. We're trying to figure out what to do when staff members have a cough or stuff like that. Do we book off? Do they come in? Do they stay home? There's still a, a wave. We're still in this huge wave of infections and stuff here in Tokyo. It's really not a good, uh, not a good situation right now. So. We've had occasions sometimes now in the past few weeks where a couple of staff members have come to work with quite a strong cough, a deep cough. <coughs> oh, good morning. Oh, Shiba-san, she's here, she's here. We were talking about you. Shiba-san, I talked to you on So, just a little bit. This camera. Where? Where? 
Oh, here, 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 here. This is so, 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 so. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is the lady. For those of you who don't know, this is the you know, ghost print lady, the spider lady. This is uh, the show. Yes. You know, yes. Ninja, you know, ninja related you know, woodblock prints. Mukono ninja. Business mo sugoi genki de show. Sugoi genki. Mo mai nichi shugo kai taike nari masu ka. Mo suju ni nsanka shimasu yo. So, 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 今日トゲやすい形になりますから。と,とす今日お店に森さん、うん、あの何さん何さんが来るんですから、はい、口半になって一緒に置いて、ね、ちょっとだけ説明して、はい、どうぞ。あ、ありがとうございます。はい。はい、じゃあちょっと渋さんができることありますが、はい、あの錦の紙でしょ。うんうんはい、錦です。まだ出して勝ちてない。うん、だからあのまあ九時半からでもできますから駅を作る間に。紙を買ってホットカーペットの上に入れて、温めておく。そう、うん、そうそう。わかりました。ちょっとそれやっといて。いいです。だから錦の紙どこにあるとわかりますか？あの。わかんなかったらまた聞きに行きます。オッケー。だから階段のあの下の三角でしょ。うんはい、一番下は竹長大広。錦の紙のパック。何枚？三百枚ぐらいが入っているパックありますから。うん、じゃあこの中から自分が欲しい枚数取って、両手もない。今日半分切る？半分切ります。オッケー。じゃあもし、じゃあサプチューじゃあ取って切って、うん、今のあのやる台、うん、右側がやるところ、うん、左側は板とかタオ、うん、その下に入れて、うん、暖かくなる。あ、わかりました。じゃあちょっとやっていきますね。はい。スキルミスキルミスキルミスキルミそう。Okay, sorry about that. Took a bit of, you know, I just gave her her instructions. She's, she's here today. She's going to do some paper sizing for her next print. We're going to start around 9 30. And she's going to go upstairs now to cut her paper and get it warm and get it ready. But for us now, I see it's 9 15. It's time to do our switch every day.、Uh, we take away the carving for the moment. And now let's switch to our show and tell segment of the little stream. And I have an embarrassment of riches today. We have so many things to look at. I don't know where to start. Let's take a bit of a, not a poll here, but let me ask a couple of things here. In the last stream, let me get some of this shrunk down a bit. In the previous stream, we leafed through the bird book, the book that we got from Switzerland, the reproduction of the Utamaro birds. We also have received now, we have received another copy of this book for comparison. Now, it makes no sense for me to just open it up and leaf through the same thing, because for the most part, it is the same. It's the same pictures. So, what I want to do, let's do this. Let's crack open, let's go back to the first one just to remind the new people what we've got here. Then let's compare a little bit of the two books. Without spending the entire 15 minutes on it, and then let's see how it goes from there, because there's so many things to look at. So, to recap, for the people who weren't here the other day, <coughs> we received this book published in 1912 in Germany. Short recap here it is a book of woodblock print. I, maybe I should have asked Shiba san to stay and do camera work for me. I don't know, I didn't think about that. The book was published in 1912 and it's reproductions. They're, they're made by woodblock. Everything you see here, you're going to look at in the next few minutes, is actually cut and printed on woodblocks the same way as you saw me doing a few minutes ago. So when I say reproductions, I don't mean offset or something like that. I just simply mean reproduction in the sense of it was made back in 1790s and here it is being made again in 1912 with the same technology. So, we saw this in the other stream. We flipped through the 15 pages of the book, looking at a few features and just getting a general overview. 
One thing I didn't spend any time on was the opposing sides. The album has the pictures on the right-hand side, which contain Japanese kyoka poetry. For each image, there are two poems. The bird is identified, the poet, his handle name is here, and his poem is here. In this 1912 version, the German researchers translated all of this as much as they could. The German researchers translated as much of this as they could into German along with extensive footnotes trying to explain all the ins and outs of the poetry. Mafalda was here the other day, speaks German. She says it's a very, very old-fashioned approach. She says some of the birds' names are actually no longer used. And as far as the meaning of the poems go, it's anybody's guess as to what the meaning is. It's very much letterpressed. Somebody's mentioning this. It has got a beautiful touch. This is on Japanese hosho paper. And I'm really sorry I don't have a proper light set up at this bench to show you, but it is indeed beautifully, beautifully letterpressed. And even though I don't have any idea what the German itself means, it is a beautiful object to behold. Okay, that was the book. We paged through it. At the front, there is also an extensive introduction, all in German, along with a hand-carved reproduction of the uh, preface to the original book. So there we have what we looked at the other day. We now have, this came to me from a book dealer in Switzerland, and I had to pay <coughs> about, what was it, fi about $500 for it. I forget the exact price. We now have a second copy, and this is from a book dealer in Germany, and this was about half the price of the book that I bought first. This one matches the copy that Mafalda showed me, the lady who was here the other day. We can pop up quickly an image. Mafalda-san has a copy of the book. Her copy, which we see a photograph here, her copy matches this one in appearance. A couple of things to say. What's this? What are we looking at here? This is not actually an intended pattern. What we've got is a very thin fabric glued onto a cardboard to make the cover. In fact, my copy also has a similar structure. It's got a very thin fabric glued onto a piece of paper and glued down to the boards to make the cover. This one works the same, but what has happened over the years is you can see the brush marks from the back. This area and this area are where the glue has soaked through over the years. So the pattern here is, wasn't intended to be, uh, to be there. And the other thing about my copy is, as we can see, looking at the side, this is heavily water damaged. It's been perhaps even in an actual flood. We can't tell. We've been looking at it here, trying to figure out how the damage could have occurred, but it is heavily water damaged. Oh, the other thing before we open it up and move on. This is another aspect to the mystery. The copy we saw the other day, it says there are an edition of 300, and this is copy number 23. This one, with slightly different printing, heavier, denser printing, says, and the same label, edition of 300, this is number 294. Mafalda's copy has the same kind of cover on the cup, and her edition is two, I think it's two, 280 or something, she said. Opening them up, we see it's pretty much the same book. There's the introduction material, and there's the pictures, and they are, I've looked at them side by side, one by one, one by one. They match pretty much exactly. <clears throat> now the theory is here, that this German publisher actually put it out as an edition of 300, which one we don't know, and then it sold well, so he's thinking, hmm, let's do this again. And another edition of 300, perhaps. Or maybe they changed the cover partway along, we don't know. As soon as I got this second copy, 
Let me try and find a page to explore so I can show you what's going on here. As soon as I got the second copy, Dave is interested to figure out which one might have come first. Do either of these block sets show any damage? It's like the Great Wave thing we're doing. You know, the British Museum has their Great Waves, all those similar copies of the Great Wave. Oh, hi, hi, Nakasawa-san. Hello, hello, good morning. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Ah, so desu ka? Hey. We have a pop, a break in the borderline. Okay. Now I'm talking to the stream. Oh. Down here, we have the same pop, the same break in the borderline. So it's the first thing we look at to try and decide are these prints made from the same block set. And absolutely, they seem to be. The patterns here, get this camera, my God, I need a cameraman. Ah! I can't speak with that in there, it doesn't matter. The spatter paper is different, of course, because this is sprayed on, this is not printed. But all other lines, every other line we look at is, as far as I can detect, absolutely identical. The pigments are the same, the impression is the same, the way the printer is pushed into the paper is the same. I would have said, if nothing else, these are absolutely... Good morning. Oh, it's Kensa. Soka, soka. We got a crowd here today. Hi. Trying to find another example to show to compare the two. Here we are. I've got to be careful not to smack these up. I'm sorry, excuse me. It's, it's difficult to handle these things here. Copy number one, a break in the border. Copy number two, a break in the border. So it would seem as we go step by step by step that they're from the same blocks. But there is one place where this is different. The water, the water damaged copy on the very last print has a number of breaks in the border at this, on the very last print, and the first copy has a clean border at that point. And there's three places there on that same line. This one has a broken border in a couple of places here. When you look at the other copy, the border is clear and straight. So that single fact alone seems to tell us that this one came first. It's got no broken lines on the border, and this one with the broken lines would presumably have come later. It's been bashed up and it's been smacked a bit. Now this could happen during the printing run. While they're making 300 copies, it could be that maybe the, you know, the carver had carved a bit roughly, the wood was a bit weak, out they come. This happens to me, it happens to me. So it could happen during the printing run of 300. So these are just an earlier and a later sheet from the printing run, or it could be this was X years later. Does my copy have the breaks on the left side of that page? We're looking at my copy. This is, these, are, these two copies are mine. I don't know. Does Mafalda's copy have that break? I don't know. Now, another aspect to this, it's difficult to show some of these things on the camera. Ettone, how are we going to do this? You may have noticed the paper here looks green. It's got a greenish tinge. In both of these copies, we see that. But we also, as we page through it, we see that the greenish tinge is not the same all the way through. 
it's there, but in some places it's a bit lighter and in some places it's a bit darker. And what this is, let me see if I can find a place that proves it, that shows it. What this is, it's, arti it's artificial aging. Let me find the place that I can show you. Hang on a sec. Here we are. Can we do this? If we look inside, this area here, what we're looking at at the moment is the inside of the folded sheet. And this stain, and I myself, I've been here and I've done this with some of our work. When we make our octopus print, we do what's artificial toning on the paper. And we take the sheet of paper, put it down on a board, and we brush coloration on top of it. And sometimes at the edge of the sheet, at the edge of the sheet, the water seeps underneath onto the back and stains the back side. And the back side of these sheets are not green, they are all white. So these sheets have been, before printing or after printing, I don't know, they've all been brushed with what we would call in Japanese furubi, something to make it look old and aged. Now, whether that was done in Japan or on the German side, I don't know. But somebody had the idea to make the sheets look artificially aged. I really wish they hadn't done that because here now, 110 years later, they don't just look aged, they look dirty because they look stained and dirty. Now, why did I bother buying the second copy given that I have one copy already? It's obviously water damaged. The dealer told me it was water damaged. He showed pictures of it. What I want to do is see if we can fix this. Normal little staining like this, folding like this, we can actually fix this if we have single prints. We can take the prints, put them in the water the same ways we do when we're making woodblock prints and dry them and flatten them and we can get rid of nearly all of this crease. But I can only do that if I can take the prints apart. And these things are glued together at the edges. The sheets are okay, but at the outside edge, they're glued together, and at the inside edge, they're glued together before the point at which the binding is done. So Dave's challenge here is to take the book apart first, the binding. My God, what time is it? Oh my God, 9.31. Ah, I thought, no. Oh. If I take the binding apart, if I can get each sheet separated from the other sheet, I can then get this thing flattened beautifully just as though it was new. The problem is I don't know what kind of glue they have used to put these together. This publishing was done in Germany. And if I knew it had been done in Japan, no problem. I know that if we soak this, these sheets are gonna come apart because it's going to be just simply a rice glue. But if this was done in Germany, I have no idea what kind of stiff dirt glue they might have used. And it could be that I can't get them apart. Morning, good morning, hello. It's up the stream, but okay. So if I destroy the album, take it apart, and then find that I can't get the individual sheets apart, I've broken the album for no purpose. So we're going to try some experiments first. Maybe we're going to take this thing upside down. I'm going to dip one corner into water to see if I can get that apart. And if so, then we will take this apart and I can get this thing looking new. Okay, it's kind of chaos happening around here right now. I'm sorry, there's three people here. We've got to get the shop up and running. I'd hope to be able to show some of this a bit more cleanly and better. I'm sorry. 
whatever, whatever, whatever. We have to move on. We have to move on. So. So someone's saying, try it on the introduction. I think I'll do that. That's the answer for this. Over at the introduction section, there are two pages that are glued together in the introduction. And it's going to be the same system. So I'm going to try it with these pages first. And if I can get these apart, if they do dissolve nicely, if it's a water-soluble glue, then we are OK. We are up and running. I can deconstruct this. I can get it done. And we'll do a lot of this on stream. I think I'll take a video of it. And that's going to be the key, this first one. If this comes apart, I am good to go. OK, I'm sorry for the chaos here at the end of this stream. I would have liked to have done this a little bit more carefully, showing you more of these pictures. But hey, we're here. I've got to get out of here now. It's going to be chaos, chaos, chaos. OK, thank you very much for the stream. I'm sorry it's wandered a little bit here and there. It doesn't matter. I had fun chatting with you, and I got even a little bit of work done. Let's get the outside up. I'll be back here again, two more days, Monday morning. Look at that weather. Look at this weather. Clear and cold. Beautiful, beautiful day in Asakusa coming up. Okay, guys, thanks very much. See you next time. Bye for now.